You want to know how to get salvation? You can't prove me otherwise. Show me, sir. You want to know how to get salvation? You can't prove me otherwise. Show me, sir. You want to know how to get salvation? You can't prove me otherwise. Show me, sir. And I'll lend my mic. <laughs> oh, Lord. Are you a preacher? Are you an ordained preacher? Yes, I am an ordained preacher and teacher. Who are you? Man, you got a large congregation. Yes, sir. We have one of the largest many, congregations in the entire world. How many people in your congregation? Oh, man, it's almost countless. We are, we are all under one church banner. The what's Israel the name of your God. church, bro? Bro, what's the name of your church? The Israel God. The Israel of God. You want you a black Hebrew Israelite? I'm black, but that ain't got nothing to do with my my nationality. My nationality is Hebrew, and I'm getting oh, okay. that yours too. But the yeah, thing I'm is, a Hebrew. I'm a Christian. I'm Christian by faith. Yeah, me too. Did you go to divinity? Did, did you go to divinity like school? Actually, actually, I did. <laughs> I do have my D man, do you? Hmm. You got a PhD in divinity? Yes. Yes. It's not divinity in ministry. D man. Hmm. Oh, okay. So you've been taught. Okay. I just wanted to get some the credentials because you were very adamant about your position. And, and let's go ahead and put on the record correct. No. I was going to tell you that whatever school you went to, you need to go and get a refund because they didn't teach you the scripture as written here. I don't see uh, how you can get so around let me, that, sir. I don't see how you can get around Let that. me show you. Get a piece of paper and a pencil, and I'm going to give you a lesson that you did not receive in this divinity school All right. that you went to. And we're going to try get your it. paper and we're pencil. Get your paper and pencil. I try to try you said that. Spirit, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Later. Well, now try the spirit by listening. The sp you try the Listen. spirit by the spirit, bro. <laughs> All right, try the spirit by listening. And close your mic out. You said Revelation 22, verses 13 through 16, is something that is equivalent to the gospel that saves and that Moses taught this same gospel that we see here in the New Testament. So let me show you. Your premise is entirely wrong because you have failed to read with understanding. You have failed to read the scripture as it is written. You got to understand Revelation 22, 14, 13 through 16 is a scripture that is written within the context of the new covenant. This is not a prophecy that was given by a man that lived under the old covenant. This is a prophecy and a declaration that is given by a man that was a disciple of Jesus Christ. John the Revelator was a man that was a disciple of Jesus Christ that taught the gospel of Jesus Christ. He didn't teach the gospel of Moses or the laws and commandments of Moses. He didn't teach that the laws and commandments of Moses is what saves you. He was teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ understand the context and what is going on here in Revelation. It is a declaration that is made within the context of the New Covenant by a man who is a follower of Jesus Christ who teaches the gospel of salvation that a man must be born again in the spirit in order to receive the eternal life. That's what he was teaching. So now that we understand the context of this declaration here in, in Revelation, we will understand that this is not something that Moses had any uh, understanding of. We understand it says in verse 14, Revelation 22, 14, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. What this one sentence here is saying is that we must do something within the context of the new covenant that will entitle us to inherit the right to the tree of life. That right to the tree of life here is referring to and is equivalent to 
the promised gift of eternal life that Jesus died so that we can inherit. We must understand when we read this, we can read it by saying, blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the promised gift of eternal life because the tree of life and the promised gift of eternal life are equivalent in this context. Blessed are they that do his, the word his here in this sentence is a pronoun that does not refer to Moses, but refers to Jesus Christ. That is the first and most profound error in your interpretation or misinterpretation of this scripture. You are now trying to apply the word commandment to the commandments that God gave Moses. No. John the Revelator, within the context of the new covenant that he is following as a disciple of Jesus Christ, is not talking about a commandment he got from Moses. He's talking about his commandments. The word his, the pronoun his, is referring to Jesus the Christ. Jesus commanded us to do something that will entitle us to receive the promised gift of eternal life. Jesus was sent by God with the promised gift of eternal life. The laws and commandments of Moses were not given to Israel with the promised gift of eternal life. God sent Jesus as the Savior. Jesus said in John chapter 6 that I am the bread of life. God sent me here as the bread of life. And whoever believes on me shall receive the promised gift of eternal life. Jesus said, God sent Moses to give you the laws and commandments of Moses. He sent you manna from heaven and you ate that manna, but you, your fathers did die. You eat of the bread that I give you and you shall live eternally. God sent me as eternal life. Those who eat my bread shall live eternally forever. So this is the commandment that is being referred to here in Revelation chapter 22, 14. What must we do to receive this promised gift of eternal life that Jesus was sent by God to give us? There is something that we must do and that something is not something that Moses taught. It is something that was revealed only by Jesus in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 5 before he went to heaven. Blessed are they that do his commandments that we might have the right to the tree of life. What must we do that Jesus commanded of us to do, that Jesus commanded of us to do, that Jesus commanded of us to do in order to receive the promised gift of eternal life that he was sent by God to give us? There is a commandment that we must do. This commandment is identified in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 5. Jesus gave us a commandment that we must do in order to receive the right to the tree of life stated in Revelation 22, 14. Jesus commanded his disciples in Acts chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. The context of this conversation between Jesus and his disciples is Jesus had died. He had been resurrected, but he didn't go straight to heaven. He remained on earth for 40 days teaching his disciples about the kingdom of heaven. And right before he got ready to go to a heaven, he had a meeting with his disciples to reveal to them for the first time what they must do to receive this promise of eternal life. They had followed him for three years and he told them over and over again that those that believe on him shall receive the promised gift of eternal life. But he had never revealed to them how they would receive this promised gift. Now we see right before Jesus is going to ascend to heaven, he is now having a meeting with them to reveal to them for the first time what they must do to receive the right to the tree of life stated in Revelations chapter 22, 14. He tells them in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 5, he says, quote, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said he, ye have heard of me. What is that promise? That promise, clearly, they're waiting for, Jesus said God was sent to them, is the promised gift of eternal life that he had been telling them for the last three years that they would receive. He said in verse five, for John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. 
So we see that Jesus commanded his disciples in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 5 to receive the promised gift of eternal life by being baptized by the Holy Ghost. That is the commandment referred to in Revelation chapter 22, 14. What we must do, we must follow his commandment to receive the right to the tree of life. We must obey his commandment. We must follow his spiritual protocol to receive the promised gift of eternal life. What must we do? We must be baptized by the Holy Ghost. As Jesus commanded in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 5, we must be baptized by the Holy Ghost. As Jesus commanded, commanded, commanded in Acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 5, 